Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day, fans. I tell you what, I hear that nerds as well, and I think, you know, that's just like so true to life. Because look at that, we have barely started, and we've got people watching us already, you suckers. There we go. Want to have a bit of a natter. Uh, now, this can be taken either way. Uh, once again, in these conversations, there's no right and there's no wrong. It's just purely opinions and thoughts, right? Just a bit of a chat amongst some dudes and some people writing stuff, right? Uh, and I've come up with this theory or this, this uh, conversation, this topic about fans who take their fanaticism uh, of something too seriously. Now, there's two ways of looking at this. Now, you can look at it from the way of saying, oh, you've got nerds out there like your Dave Barkers of the world who are quoting all this Robocop stuff back, mm-hmm. even though we're not talking about Robocop tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, fans who take it too seriously. And then you've got the other angle, fans who take it so seriously that they actually, it's almost like they blur the line between reality and fantasy and say, you know what, they are so invested in something that if someone talks bad about it, they take it as a personal insult and they're actually like personally offended by it. Uh, or they see something they don't like and they just go to town on social media and just bag the crap out of whoever's involved and producers and actors and all this sort of stuff to the point where they're actually potentially damaging the franchise that they're trying to support. Um, I'll give you one example, not currently but this is this actually happened um in uh, funny enough about 1991 in melbourne so um there was a dude who created a little newsletter called anti-trek right and he was uh, a person who had a bit of a thing about star trek and when you first looked at it you thought it was a guy was it was a guy who was anti-star trek and was just hanging shit on star trek you know the, the tv series as it turned out He was actually a Star Trek fan. What he couldn't handle was other Star Trek fans because Star Trek fans back in the 90s, and this is true because I saw this for myself, they took it so seriously that if someone said, oh, Kirk is a shithouse character and Spock is a dickhead and whatever, they actually took it as if it was a personal insult and they would really go to town. It was like just just ridiculous. And he was actually criticising other fans because it's like, guys, it's just a TV series chill out it's no big deal and he actually was actually turning against his own people and um and we've seen that in recent years with star wars uh and admittedly social media doesn't help and the keyboard warriors do go to town on a lot of these things and there's been a lot of vitriolic posting regarding um uh, presidents of companies and actors from films and whatever else so there's two ways of looking at it you've got your fans who just are a little bit over fanish i guess you can call us three a bit like that and those who take it a bit too too far and i was just now there's a lot of posts coming up i haven't read them yet because i'm looking at the camera um but uh i'm just curious to see if uh you two lads have any thoughts or opinions uh i'll start with you mps well it's it's funny that you mentioned that uh i find that there are some fans that just can't turn it off and that sort of is a bit detrimental i think to themselves Mm -hmm. more than anything else um when you're constantly talking about something or or going on about it as if it's real as if it's, um, and we're not talking about sci-fi fans. We can talk about soap opera fans at the same time, uh, where it's it feels like it's life and death. You know, oh my god, stalkings and all that sort of stuff because um, they don't realise that an actor is doing a job. Essentially, it's no different to the person who works at the supermarkets or who does your your accounts or works at the bank or whatever. They're just doing a job to entertain people, but they take it far too seriously, uh, and things happen, and not all good things happen. So. Um, yeah, but other than that, I, I think I think here in Australia we have probably some of the better fans in the world. You know, we can have a convention and and not run up to to actors or whatever the case is and go too crazy. You know, in terms of psycho crazy, rather than oh my god, you're actually here, or you know, the old th- thoughts that you're more afraid than them, or they're more afraid of you, sort of thing. So you sort of back yourself off and you try and play it down. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, I think, um, yeah, some people do take it a little too far and it's a shame. All right. I'll be with you in a sec, Jeffro. Um, Catherine, I like what you wrote. Uh, there are those who take it so seriously, they turn into a profession. That's obviously for those people, a, a really good thing because they're, 
that, I wouldn't call that necessarily fanaticism, though. That is just purely I have an interest in something. I really love it. I can turn it into a career and go from there. And they're the, the, the great Cinderella stories. They're the people who sort of said, I have a dream. I want to be a part of this thing. And they end up being on the other side of it. And that's actually a very positive thing. So that's not necessarily what we're sort of covering off here. So uh, I just wanted to clarify that because people who can make that transition uh, is absolutely fantastic. So and I'm sure all of us would love to be uh, working in the film industry uh, if you're a film uh, you're a film not a fanatic um, a supporter. So, okay. um, Jeffro, anything? You, what do you want to? Anything you want to add to yeah. this? I'm going to give you uh, three different stories. One is going to be a good story. One's going to be uh, equal story, and one's going to be a terrible story about uh, fans and fanatic fanaticism. So, uh, uh, the good story is uh, the one that sprung to mind is a lady whose name will be well known when I mention it. And that's B. Jo Trimble. So mm. back in the 60s, she loved Star Trek. Did she love it? What? So when it was cancelled, she made it her life pretty much to issue out letters to all the different stations, encourage the fans to, to write, to try and get Star Trek saved, did everything she could, raise money uh, and did everything else. So uh, as a result of her efforts, we did actually see Star Trek come out for a third and final season. So... Her fanaticism actually saved the show and, uh, I mean, she was amply rewarded by um, later of having a position within uh, Gene Roddenberry's organisation and such, but uh, that's one case of fanaticism that was really um, beneficial and really positive. So that's, um, that's the good side of fanaticism. Uh, the, the mediocre one that I'm going to use next is the the fan that was so obsessed with uh, Star Trek The Next Generation that he actually turned his whole apartment into a, um, a basically a living set. So spent tens of thousands of pounds, this was in the UK, uh, making sure that uh, everything was uh, attention to detail and all that. And it just, <clears throat> um, I mean, it made the news because it was such a big novelty and it was quite amazing. And, uh, years later, once he did it, he tried to sell the place, but uh, by that time, Next Generation had sort of dropped off the radar and uh, the exorbitant amount of money that he ploughed into that, obviously he was never going to ever see that return and I don't think he ever did. But, uh, I mean, it's a case of um, it's a nice kind of fanaticism, but seriously, you know, if you're investing tens of thousands of pounds, do something a little bit better than... Um, self-indulge in uh, creating your house um, as a uh, living Star Trek set. And the, um, the, the, the worst end of the, uh, the, the story I've got, the, the bad fanaticism, this is one that uh, I read up a few uh, weeks ago when we were talking about uh, collecting, uh, and it was to do with um, Beanie Babies. Now, uh, back in the, the 90s and all that, that was the hot property and all that. So uh, there was one case in America, sadly, it's always America, isn't it, that uh, has these examples, where a couple collected Beanie Babies and they fell out and they got a divorce. And you know what the big thing about the divorce was? Who was going to get the Beanie Babies? Isn't that pathetic? Mm. So uh, that's the, uh, the, the down, horrible, dark side of uh, being a fanatic is that um, you can be squabbling over stupid toys and losing your marriage over it. Yeah, because the thing I find interesting, um, and this is, you know, people like the three of us and a lot of people reading this now, you know, we love our, um, our franchises and our genres and, you know, this is the our class is the time and the place to talk about all this sort of thing and, you know, we have a bit of a laugh with it and a few gags and whatever else. And, of course, the key thing is that we can laugh at ourselves. Uh, I find that if you're a fan and you can't laugh at yourself for being a fan, then there's a good possibility you've got a few issues going on there. Or if you're feeling that whenever someone is critical of, either your the the show that you like or the movies that you like and you're actually taking it as i said earlier as a personal insult well then you're starting to cross a line a little bit and you're blurring the line between reality and fantasy and there are plenty of people in the world who do that because maybe for whatever reason they've got the social outcast thing going on and it's their life they just like they've got in, they're invested their entire existence in it and 
when something happens that they don't agree with, that they just go completely off the deep end in, in a big way. And uh, uh, someone mentioned, I think it was Michelle mentioning about, you know, sort of backman actors being picked and people going oh, just completely nuts. And, of course, now that there's a voice for that sort of thing, which is uh, social media, it's just bringing out the darkness from everybody. And I'd actually said, um, imagine if social media had existed in 1999 when The Phantom Menace came out, poor old Armoured Best would have just been shredded to pieces uh, back then because everybody just hated Jar Jar Binks so much. So um, I do find it interesting that, there are those who do take it too, too far, and I think that they're the people that, as fans, if we were to meet those fans in the street, you'd almost want to bell them in the head and go, dude, seriously, what's the problem? It's just the freaking movie. And as you said, uh, Jeffro, you know, the Beanie Babies are just bloody toys. So um, the fact that people do uh, mess these things up is uh, a bit of a worry. MPS. It sort of sounds that people have their priorities set in the wrong place, you know. Look, I could understand if it was million dollar artworks that they're fighting over picassos and and da vinci's and whatever the case is but beanie babies you know it's kind of one of those things you know and if it was a joint collection then you should just take it separately if it's one person collecting and the other person wanting it because out of spite then you know what whatever uh but uh in terms of um i've lost my train of thought there you go jeffro you can jump in yeah, I mean, it's interesting because you mentioned about the fact that um, back in um, the Phantom Menace days, I mean, we still had uh, bulletin boards and message boards and all that. So there was very much a, an active uh, social fandom. But I think the the fans that were on those kind of boards were more pure fans, whereas I think a lot of the, the aggravation that we're seeing now is probably people that aren't really so much uh, true fans at heart. I mean, they don't seem to be because they hate it all. So uh, I think they've sort of uh, just jumped on the fact that there's so much accessible um, social media now with Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we know what Twitter's like, obviously, the um, mm, anyway. hotbed for uh, social comments. So yep. um, I just think it's also more to do with the fact that some people who aren't true fans need to be able to get attention or as uh, as we've seen from a lot of uh, people that have sort of analysed the trolls is the trolls get a bit of a, uh, an endorphin kick out of it, a little bit of a high. So, you know, I've, I've pissed somebody off, therefore, you know, get a bit of a buzz of it and it's like they then try and outdo each other. So, you know, it's the true fans that are on the bulletin boards uh, back in the day. They... Um, they said what they felt and it was an honest feeling, whereas I think now it's more a case of it's uh, who knows whether it's sincere, sincere or not. There's just too much fake news and, and too many people just trying to uh, uh, get a rise out of people. It's, it's terrible. Yeah, you're absolutely correct in that one because um, I, I personally I call it baiting, right? Uh, I know it's called trolling and all that, but I call it baiting where you deliberately say something to upset the apple cart and maybe with five or six words, you can just like set the whole world, you know. So <laughs> ironically, it's a bit like the you know, the dark night. Look what I do with a couple of gallons of gasoline and a bullet or two. You just say a few words that everybody will react to, and then you just sit back and they'll probably just sit there laughing their heads off, thinking, "Look what I've just done by saying, oh, that actress is a complete moron." And then all these people jump to her defence, and of course they're just like lost their mind because they're thinking, "Shit, you can't say that. We've got to go to this person's defence." And whoever's just started in the first place, just sitting back thinking, "Well." Yeah, you know, that was easy. And of course, once other people see the reaction that this individual got, they then copycat the whole thing. And before you know it, there's a whole army of people out there who apparently believe this statement, this this vitriolic material, and they don't actually believe it at all. They just know that it's, as you said, Jeffro, it's a way of getting attention. And uh, um, because I'll tell you a funny story very, very quickly. Um, there was a situation, as you know, with a female doctor when she was picked. There's a lot of comment about that. Oh, we hate it. We can't stand it. We love it. It was just like, Freaking was just nuts, right? I mean, the the attitude that a lot of people had was just like, guys, settle down. It's right. They're going to try something different. Just give it a go. If you don't like it, don't watch it, right? Even at the Doctor Who fan club, I was there that time. They were going to have a discussion about the female doctor. And I went along because I thought it was going to be like bloodbath at the house of death, right? Nerds on this side of the room for, nerds on that side against, let them go for it. And they had all these rules and all this sort of stuff to say, all right, if anybody gets, if it gets out of hand, they're going to cancel the conversation, da 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 And what do you think happened? Nothing. If anybody was there with a negative viewpoint, they didn't say a word. 
Why? Because they were in the presence of all these other people. And only one lady stood up and presented her views as to why she didn't think it was a good idea. But she presented it well. It was no big deal. But no one stood up and said, oh, I reckon she's a bitch. I reckon she's an idiot. They shouldn't do it. No, nothing like that happened at all. And either the naysayers, either they stayed away and didn't turn up or they were just too chicken shit to stand up and go, this is what I think. This is what I wrote yesterday on social media and I'm saying it right now. None of them did it. And I thought, yeah, it's the whole thing of being able to hide behind the keyboard and not being able to do it in face, in person. And I thought, yeah. well, that just proved it. Sorry. Go and I think you've got, a, you've got a good point in so much as that if you can say something well and you can justify your uh, thoughts and opinions, then people will actually listen. But quite often a, a lot of these um, uh, comments are so baseless that, uh, you know, they're just pure hate and anger. So there's no... There's no reasoning behind it. I, I I, can't say, well, I hate this because it's just, you know, like, you know, I hate this movie, bring back the Snyder Cut or something like that. It's just, uh, there's, there's just comment but no explanation or, or reasoning behind that. And, um, yeah, it's just too easy. And I always yeah. thought um, as you're talking, maybe it had something to do with back in the 2000s they had all those daytime talk shows and we used to have sort of like uh, talk shows that were, were good to watch. And then suddenly someone sort of said, well, let's spice it up a little bit. And that mm. got the ratings. And then someone said, well, let's outdo this guy and let's be more outrageous and more obnoxious and get wilder and wilder. And that got more ratings. So I think sort of people have sort of seen that, well, the more crazy and extravagant and far out that you get, the more attention you get. So you're not necessarily um, making any good arguments, but you're being so wild about it that people find that entertaining. Yeah. Unfortunately, what it does do is it also, I'll get to MPS in a sec, what it does do, it detracts from the really positive news and the positive stories that are coming out of it and people just focus on the negative. Um, so, yeah, MPS? I was going to say, it's also a level of maturity. So when Dags and I do a review of any of the Star Wars films we did on the podcast, um, and even Chris, it was because as filmmakers, we can review it differently, I think. Uh, we've made films, we know how they work, how they get created, we know what was wrong with it, and we don't turn around and pull the thing apart to shreds and say it was just terrible. We go, well, hang on, these bits were good, these bits were not so good, these bits could have been improved upon. And that's a level of maturity, I think. Back when I was younger, probably in my teenage years, I had an issue with space balls because it was taking the Mickey out of Star Wars. And I really just didn't like the film. I knew all the quotes from it and everything. I'd never seen it. But because it took the Mickey out of Star Wars and I loved Star Wars so much, um, it wasn't until much, much later in life that I realised, well, hang on a second, I, now I see what parody is. I, I didn't understand it back then. And that's why uh, I, I consider that a level of maturity uh, in terms of fandom, you know. And you said some of these guys are just punching in words of behind a keyboard. Yes, they are. You know, there's only one way to fix that, and that's make sure that everyone has their full names and faces on anything, and let's see how those keyboard warriors kick out a uh, fuss from there. It's kind of funny because we're running a live show here and there are people commenting here and all the rest of it. I was fully prepared because someone had wised me up prior to this and said, just be aware that you may get the odd person sticking their nose in and sinking the boots in. And like, you know, we release stuff on YouTube, like some of the films and whatever else. And I thought, you know what? I'm cool with it because I, 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 I like to think I don't get baited and if somebody just types rubbish, I, got, I, I can sort of handle what people are trying to do. Uh, but I was prepared for it and it's sort of, fortunately it hasn't happened that uh, say somebody might jump and hear some random person and just say, you know, that us three of us are a bunch of idiots and we've got no idea what we're talking about. And the key to it is just not to react to that. I remember even back in a long time ago when people would say to me, oh, you know, Star Wars is stupid. Anybody who likes Star Wars is an idiot. And my response back would be, yeah, I agree with you. Star Wars fans are idiots. And that's how you, you counteract someone trying to fuel the fire but just not giving them any fuel. And you go, and then you can actually add to it on top of that and say, yeah, they're all a bunch of idiots. And I'll tell you what, I only like it because it picks up, I pick up the chicks. And they've got nothing to they, – they can't respond because they're trying to get a rise and it hasn't worked And uh, because you're agreeing with them. Um, and, of course, that's in a face-to-face -face scenario, And but it is harder with the social media being the way it is. But I think um, in recent times – Star Wars in particular has been hammered pretty hard by people who apparently aren't fans, as Jeffrey said earlier, because they're um, sinking the boots into uh, Kathleen Kennedy and Kelly Marie Tran and all the rest of it. And it's like, well, clearly these people have an issue and uh, it's just making it, um, it's all, they're getting all the wrong attention. So, 
There. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we are a bunch of idiots. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. I've always wanted someone to come with me. Yes. We're going to lie on you. It's all right, Ads. We're a bunch of idiots, but at least we can spell your with an E at the end of it. That's all right. Yeah, very good. And the fact that we didn't know Bill Paxson's name earlier on, absolutely. So there you go. But I would be expecting it. So, And you just got to know how to deal with that stuff. So, uh, uh, yes, exactly right. Thank you, Daniel, for correcting him. So uh, very, very, very good. But, uh, yes, uh, I think in the grand scheme of things, and everybody has written here um, a lot of saying, yeah, you're right, because people are behind the keyboard uh, and there's no accountability. That's actually one of the worst parts of the whole social media phenomenon that we currently have so there you go all right it's three minutes to 9 30 or we should be wrapping up in a couple of ticks uh anything that you two wish to add before we sign off yeah i want to say uh watch the movie fanboys where it's like star wars versus star trek fans so you know if you want to sort of uh, just have a bit of a poke of fun at uh, rivalry and and sort of this kind of thing just watch that and just enjoy it I can tell you a funny story about that actually when we started running skyforce meetings in 1994 i had a guy come up to me and he said, this is Sky Force Star Wars Social Club meetings. And a guy came up to me and said, I'm so glad you're running these Star Wars meetings because I hate Star Trek. And at the time, I thought I didn't have the heart to tell him. It's like, dude, I've been a member of the Star Trek fan club for 10 years now. <laughs> <laughs> I just let it go to the keeper, you know. So, so there you go. So, MPS, anything you want to add in, mate? No, I think that's about it for me in terms of this. Uh, if you want to see docos on fandom, then there's, you know, the Trekkies one, which is a bit sort of over the top. There's a good one that's done by uh, the kid that plays Malfoy in Harry Potter where he goes and visits three different fans who are highly interested in his, his personal life. I can't remember the name of that one, but it's very, very good. I liked it a lot. Um, but, yeah, watch some of the fan docos if you haven't seen them and, and rate your opinion from there. Um, I like what Michelle said about when you say you're a Buffy fan and people just look at you strangely. Well, Buffy was actually quite a long time ago now, so depending on who you're speaking to, they may not know who you're talking about. So, But uh, they, are, it, 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 they shouldn't, though, because Buffy was a very good show, as was Angel. So uh, there you go. Very good. Uh, yeah, and, yes, thanks, Colin. I'm now a life member of that Star Trek fan. How good is that? So anyway, guys, we're going to buzz off. Don't forget, we're not here next week. Uh, you go to uh, Moss Eisley Monthly, so the new Galaxy Quest doc. I'm not sure what that means, David. Oh, that's not on Netflix. It's, it's on yeah. Netflix, I think. Uh, yeah. oh, okay. Never okay. say surrender. Yeah, very good. I like it. Very good, very good. Uh, and don't forget, if you haven't done so uh, already, be sure to check out the old Batman and Me uh, site and see MPS and I in action, as we will be in a couple of weeks. So there you go. All right, see you next week for a bit of Star Wars action on my Sicily Monthly. So until then, make sure you all stay nerdy. Okay, stay bye. Nerdy. Bye. See ya. Bye.